Oh boy, we're here in Miami, Oklahoma, at the Ottawa Council Hall, and we are lucky enough to have Rhonda Hayworth, the leading historian for the Ottawa tribe, explain a series that was done in 1992 about the tribal series. Now, this is images of the leaders of the Indian nations. And Rhonda, could you explain to us what we're looking at here? Well, this here, um, the tribes got to choose who they wanted to be pictured on their um, information sheet. This one here is Edward Keogh, and he was the oldest dancer that we had in our tribe and a veteran of World War II. And so we chose him to be um, the face of our tribe at that time. Okay, and the language that they spoke? Was Algonquin. Okay. It's an Algonquin language group, the Ottawa language. And all tribes that speak the same language group have a very similar language so that they can understand each other. There are several different language groups, like the Iroquois had a different one. The, um, the Navajos have a different one. Correct, and they're now located here in the corner of Oklahoma, right. where we are now. This here is the Miami tribe, and they belong to the Algonquin language group. So if two, if a Miami and an Ottawa got together, they can understand each other. They have similar word sounding. And they're right here next to the Ottawas in our county. And this is Little Turtle. Yes. Okay. This is the Modoc tribe, and they are a Luthianan linguistic family. They're actually from Northern California originally. They were here by prisoners of war, and that's their... Uh, Chief Captain Jack, he was the he was the main leader of the um, rebels. I would get guess you would call it. And the quantity of them that came from California? There was ninety of them. Jeez. By train. Yes, and then this here's the Peorias. They are an Algonquin language group, and this is their uh, chief. Back in 1908, William Skye, and you can tell that they are a um, northeastern tribal group because they they all most of the northeasterns have the same kind of headdress. This here's the uh, Quapa, and they are. A Denali um, language group. Their uh, original territory was actually Oklahoma, Arkansas, and Missouri area. They are related to the um, Omahas and the Kansas tribes, the Poncas, the Osage, and this is their one of their chiefs, a uh, tall chief. Uh -huh. This is the Seneca Cayuga. And they're an Iroquoian language group. Same as same as me. Yes. And this is Minnie Spicer Thomas. Mm-hmm. First father of the Southern Clan. And this is the Wyandotte tribe and um, Chief Leonard Bearskin. And the Wyandots were an Algonquin language group, and they were um, mainly from southern Ohio area at the time, and were removed here along with the other tribes. And this is the Leaford Bearskin. Leaford. Leaford Bearskin. Yes. Okay. And he was actually a pilot. In World War Two, and went over and um, was one of the first natives who went over to help the English before we got into the war. I like his headdress because ours is the same with split turkey feathers on top. Mm -hmm. It's a white birch bow, a wooden 
bow with yeah. felt or cloth and then split turkey feathers. Mm -hmm. This is the Chickasaw and they're um, from the southeast area originally and they're a Muskegon linguistic group and they're around the Oklahoma City area now and this man was a governor the tribes have different names for what they call their leaders oh okay All some right. of them are chiefs some, some are of them governors. are uh, councilmen some mm -hmm. of them are governors yep. Yep. okay it just kind of depends on what the tribe and this de is Bill determines and not to not, be? not to be mm -hmm. this is the Caddo tribe and they are part of the Canadian or Cadoan language group, and it's a the picture is an unknown tribal woman or tribal tribesman, and they're just south and west of the Oklahoma City area. Now, as you notice, that this is a very different outfit that this man has on of the period. Mm -hmm. If you knew how to read what he is wearing, the feathers, the symbols that are on him, the way he wears his clothing, it's just like a, a stamp that has been addressed mm -hmm. and mailed from anywhere in the world. You could track this man back to the arms of his mother by knowing what he's wearing, what his symbols are. So he, this is why the difference in all of these mm -hmm. um, tribal period costumes or period dress. And this is the United um, Tribes of the Cherokees. This is the Ketua Band and their Iroquois language and they were uh, put into the Cherokee Tribe. They were relatives of the Cherokees and then when they were moved here, they were just stuck in with the Cherokees. There was a few others that were stuck in with the Cherokees, a Delaware tribe and a Shawnee tribe. And this is Henry Doublehead. Mm -hmm. This is the Iowa tribe. And they were a Siouan uh, language group. And... Uh, they originally came from Iowa area up north in this is holy rabbit yeah mostosis I'm glad you're helping me pronounce <laughs> some of these names because I tend to goof things up and this is the Ka tribe and it's the same as the Kwapa the Denali language group and um they're also a Siouan also, so they'd be relatives of the Quapaws and the Iowas. It was, and this is uh, Chief Washashunga. Now, I've seen that medal before, but I don't have the explanation for it. Is that the, where they brought them all to Washington, D.C.? It could be, yeah. um, and also different, um, French traders gave them medals oh, okay. that determined um, which trading group oh, okay. they were trading with. By the with. metal they'd wear? Yeah. Okay, so don't let me mis misspeak anything. Or... Mm -hmm. This is the Apache. Um, this is a group of Apaches that were captured during um, wars with the, the white soldiers, and they were brought to... Um, Fort Seal, and so they have a Apache tribe in Oklahoma too. Okay, so you're talking here in Oklahoma now. Yeah. Okay. So this is. Yeah, Fort Seal. Kunka. Kunka Zaki. Yeah. Kiowa Apache chief. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now all the pronunciations I would pronounce. With the Ottawa, um, it'd probably be different in their language group, but mm -hmm. 
and this is Fort Seal Apache. Same with the other Apache. They were uh, brought to as prisoners of war, and they would have come from a different area than the other Apache group. Okay, and you can see they landed a little bit further northeast of the other Apaches that yes. we just saw. And that's because when they were actually let out of prison, then they gave them land in a different area. Yep. And this is the it's Kiowas. So and um, it's a, actually the, the language group is the Kiowan language group. Okay, and this is two hatchet. Mm-hmm. Okay. This is the Eastern Delaware. And there's actually another Delaware that um, they're part Shawnee and they're called Lenape Ace also. And this is they're part of the Algonquin language group. And this is Lewis Ketchum. Ketchum, yeah. Now, are you saying that they came from Delaware on the East Coast? No, they're the Delaware tribe. Okay, which originated. Uh, these ones would have came off the East Coast, yes. Okay. And then this is the Delaware of Western Oklahoma. They would have came off the Eastern Coast, but they split. Like all tribes, once they got too big, they split off into different bands. Okay. And this has been another one. All right. Now I'm going to hold this right there and do a second half of this because... By surprise, there are much more of these than I anticipated. Okay? Mm -hmm. so we're just going to start a second one of these.